Yeah. 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 All right. So we're going to look at sample proportions. Now these are linked uh, very closely to the central limit theorem that we were looking at last lesson. I don't want to keep that up, but not for today. Um, these are linked very closely to the central limit theorem, and it's about saying if we have we want to find something out about a population, it's got to be binomial, so it's a success or failure. Do you like vegetables? Do you like you know, whatever it might be? Do you support Queensland? Success or failure sort of information. Rather than collecting information from the whole population, why don't we want to do that? Too hard. Too hard, it takes a lot of time. Rather than doing that, we can use a sample proportion, which is just saying we're going to take samples and identify what's going on, much like our central limit theorem. Central limit theorem before. Cool? It's linked very closely to Bernoulli and binomial uh, random variables which we've looked at in the past, but these are the key piece of information you need to take out of that. P hat, just be aware of this between P hat and P. P hat is our sample proportion, so it is saying what's the proportion of people in our sample that are successes. Cool? So what's the proportion if I was to find out about Queensland fans in Mackay, if I was to sample every 100, 100 people, what proportion of people are Queensland fans out of 100? And that's simply found by taking out observed values. So I asked 100 people, 73 said they were Queensland fans, then my observ observation value is 73, my sample size is 100. 100. My sample proportion is therefore 73 over 100, which is 0.73. Remember that this must be in decimal form or fraction form, but it must be less than one. Why must it be less than one? Or less than or equal to one? Kind of a probability greater than one. Um, happy with that? So that's our p hat. And that is a representation of our population proportion, which is given by p. That is just saying, what's the actual value of the proportion? What's the actual proportion of the population that does support Queensland? And the only way to find the population proportion is to do a census. Sweet. Our expected value is just simply our sample proportion. So that's the amount of people, with the percentage, the proportion of people we're expecting to see support Queensland. And our standard deviation, very similar to our binomial random standard deviation. There's a slight difference, but it's a combination of the two. P hat, one minus P hat divided by N and the square root of all that. Just be aware the square root applies to the whole thing. Cool? Wait, so what's the difference between P hat and P again? That's the true value. So like if I was dealing with a situation with the Queensland and Mackay thing, that'd be the population of Mackay that actually supports the proportion of people of Mackay that actually support Queensland. Yeah. The sample proportion would be the 100 people that I'm asking. Okay. Cool? Wait, so the sample size, how would that be different? So sample size is saying, if I was to get a sample size of 100 people, yeah. 73 satellite like Queensland, my sample proportion is 0.73, but my sample size is 100. Oh, okay. Cool. So that's and as we'd expect with our standard deviation, the bigger our sample size, the smaller our standard deviation is going to get. Cool. We'd expect that. Yeah. And with this, this P1 minus P, we're going to address it over here. But essentially what that means is the closer our value is to a 50-50 split, the bigger the standard deviation. The more variance we're going to see. We'll get to that in a second. Are we happy with that? The standard deviation of our sample proportion is all or often referred to as our standard error. And the reason, we're going to talk about normality and I'll explain the reason why we talk about standard error soon. But assessing normality, we can assume normality if the following criteria are met with our sample proportion. And that is that NP hat is greater than 5, greater than or equal to 5, or that N1 minus P is greater than 5. You have to do both, you can't just do one. Oh, that's, that's so let's yeah, say P was 0.6 here, right? It would be my sample size of 100 times 0.6, which would be 60. Yeah. All good. And then I'd go 100 times 1 minus 0.6, which is 0.4. 100 times 0.4, which is 40. All good. So I can assume normality there. Okay. If my proportion was 99%, though, 
I'd have 100 times 0.99, which is 99, greater than 100, all good. 100 times 0.01, 1, not greater than 100, not all good. So I can't assume normality there. What does normality actually mean? Normal, so it follows that normal distribution. And why do we want to know about a normal distribution? Why would that matter? Have we done some work on normal distributions? Yeah. What can you tell me about them? Yeah, normal. <laughs> we can use it in probability. Okay. What what's some of the characteristics of a normal distribution? Where's the middle? It's symmetrical. It's symmetrical. It's on the mean. We've got our, it's symmetrical around our mean. What can you tell me about like certain points? as we go away from the mean. So if we're one standard deviation away from the mean, what can you tell me? 68% are within. What about if we're two? What about three? So if I'm collecting data about a proportion, I can use that normality to say, well, I'm this certain that the real value lies pretty within this range. Cool? So if I collected a sample of a thousand people or whatever, I could use this information to say, well, look, this is my, my proportions, 73.73. This is my standard deviation. I'm 99.7% confident that my the true value of Mackay's population is between, say, 74 and 72%. Therefore, we should buy this many tickets for whatever. Cool? Does that make sense? So it's more accurate? Yeah, it allows us to say with confidence, as we were going, how, how, how certain am I of the result that I've collected? Cool. Really, really important. We use it in lectures, we use it in all sorts of stuff, but this is the crux of, of the stats that we've been looking at. This is sort of where we've been he heading towards from the start. Normality will be reached quicker. Sorry, on a side note, normality will be reached quicker if, looking at this, n. Do we want, what do we want n to be? Big. 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 The bigger n is, the quicker we reach normality. The bigger the sample size, the faster we reach normality. When p is close to what number do we reach normality quickly? So remember the situation before, we had the same sample size. In one situation we were normal, in the other one we weren't. Yeah, so the closer we are to 0 0.5, a 50-50 chance, the quicker we'll reach normality. Sweet. However, the bigger the standard error will be. But that's a conversation for another day. Sweet. All we're doing today, I know that this seems like a lot, but exercise 10.3, question, oh, I know, I had a four, question 1 to 14, they won't take off. The questions are not very complicated, it's just about getting your head around some of the